Welcome to the Legal Advice in Paradise podcast, brought to you by www.legaladviceinparadise.com. Even in one of the most beautiful places in the world, life can be litigious. On this podcast, the best and brightest legal minds gather to help you navigate your way through every legal question you may face. This program will help you know your rights, know what steps to take, and help you find the best legal representation, all in simple, easy to understand terms. And now, here's your host, Justine Gronwald. Aloha, Agents of Change. This is Justine Gronwald with another episode of Legal Advice in Paradise. And today is my great honor and privilege to be here with attorney Lisa Jacobs and Dr. Greg Ewan. Um, Today's subject will be collaborative divorce law. And um, it's something pretty new to Hawaii um, itself. But before I start, I would like to remind you that if you haven't ha- um, already done so, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, Legal Advice in Paradise, or uh, iTunes channel. And also, if you're not an Agent of Change exclusive member, please do so now by texting or calling your name and your email to area code 808-670-3400, and you will get a free report. Uh, telling you how to choose an attorney and also you get all our shows automatically so you don't miss a single one. So without further ado, I will have um, attorney Lisa Jacobs uh, introduce herself and uh, tell you a little bit about what she does. Okay, thank you so much Justine. Well, hello everyone. My name is Lisa Jacobs and I'm a collaborative attorney and I'm a mediator and I um, have my own firm. It's called Better Way Divorce, or the nickname is Pono Divorce. Mm -hmm. Um, I opened up my firm. I've been an attorney for the last 20 years. Um, I did open up my own firm about two years ago, and um, I'm really, really passionate in helping families who are going through that really difficult transition of divorce Mm -hmm. or separation, Mm -hmm. but do it in a way that's focused more on solving their, helping them arrive at their own solutions and solving problems rather than um, doing it the adversarial way. Right, it right. is much better for families, especially if there's children involved, to really um, move forward and think of ways that they can support one another as they restructure their family. Mm-hmm. And um, the traditional way I just find um, just leaves really a lot of damage um, to the family, both in cost, because doing a traditional litigated divorce is so much more expensive, right. and then just the toll it takes on the family. Um, what I just, what I find so heartbreaking is, is that after a, a very, very bitter, uh, bitter litigated battle, um, you know, the, the ex-spouses can barely talk with one another right, when right. they have to continue to co-parent their children. How healthy is that? Yeah. Um, so we offer up a, um, a way to help resolve their disputes, but do it in a more humane way, a more holistic and integrative way. Mm-hmm. Um, we address the mental health, the financial issues, and the legal issues um, all involved. And that's what yeah. really, really I feel called to do um, based on my experiences um, and um, you know, my life experiences and my professional experiences mm-hmm. as well. And along with you is Dr. Greg Ewan, and um, your very important role in this uh, whole divorce, collaborative divorce, is to ease everybody through the process. Um, What is your role? And and let us know more about about your practice. Practice? Um, I've been practicing in Hawaii over 30 years, too many, really. (laughs) And uh, my primary uh, service that I do for people is um, psychopharmacology, which is medication management for mm. psychiatric disorders. Mm. Um, when I heard about cloud divorce, mostly through Lisa, uh, I decided to jump on board and be a member of the team and handle the mental health aspect of the team. Basically, in terms of the team, um, you serve as a mental health coach mm-hmm. or a child specialist. The mental health coach um, helps one of the d- divorce partners to uh, get through the divorce process in a more easier way. Mm -hmm. And the child specialist is more of a sort of voice of the child to Mm. let the child's needs and concerns be known and to keep the divorce sort of child-centered a bit. Can I ask you something? When you um, 
counsel now because they're going through a divorce um, are you sitting in on um, sessions with Dr. Yuen or um, and also are the f do the family come all together to you or do you just take the child by themselves or one parent with them how is how is that done okay. uh, basically well it's done both ways okay um, you would spend time with the child individually to get to know the child mm -hmm. and then there'll be perhaps some sessions uh, where the child might be involved most of the time it's not so much that mm -hmm. it's mostly just the parents and the other professionals the attorneys and the coaches for the parents mm, okay usually, okay usually yeah so I can see how it goes hand in hand you know yes. uh, taking it from the legal aspect as well as the emotional side of it so it's a tag team kind of mm -hmm. like yeah and what's really um, nice about collaborative divorce is it's very um, it's flexible depending on the needs and the interests of everybody involved the entire family so in some instances it might be more appropriate for Dr. Greg to just to meet individually with the child at first to um, get a sense of what that child's um, concerns and fears are. Mm. And then then Dr. Greg would refer that information back to the parents so they are armed with the information to make better decisions re regarding their, um, their child. Um, as a collaborative lawyer, I can get involved. I typically would get involved in a meeting where um, maybe some legal issues would need to be addressed hand in hand along with some of the mental health or some of the emotional issues. Mm -hmm. So it really, really just depends on what the what the family's needs are. Right, it's very, right. very flexible. Now, um, you had uh, given me some things to read up on um, prior because this is um, pretty new to Hawaii. Yes. Um, you do need to have two agreeable parties though. If you have one side that is not wanting to come, then it's not going to work. You cannot lead the, ho the horse to the water and make them drink. Is that typically what you need to have in place prior to going forward with this type of divorce? Yes. Um, in order to do a case collaboratively, at a minimum, there needs to be two collaborative lawyers mm -hmm. on the case. And um, there's about a half, uh, I'm sorry, there's about two dozen lawyers um, here on Oahu that have been collaboratively trained. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Typically, a case, uh, a prospective client will call me and will want to do it this way. Mm -hmm. So what the kind of the hurdle that we need to overcome is to see whether or not his or her spouse is willing to do it this right. way, that's, too. That's what I was wondering. Because, you know? yeah, because if, if my prospective client wants to do it collaboratively, but the other spouse doesn't want to and would rather litigate, mm. then unfortunately, you know, we're not on the same page and right. it wouldn't, the process wouldn't go smoothly. So at that point, I might, I would probably need to refer out, um, you know, my prospective client actually to a more traditional lawyer. Mm. So yes, at a minimum, we need two collaborative lawyers. So we're all working as a team to help the family right. resol um, resolve their issues. So it is, um, in a way, it's self-selecting that mm. um, I can't take on all families because, um, you know, not everyone, um, is there yet, you know, right, is ready right. to process and, and choose this method. Um, and then as far as the collaborative attorneys, um, there's about 24 of them. Where do you see it going in the future? Do you, do you see it um, gaining more uh, attorneys to come on board? The reason I'm asking is that I interviewed in earlier episodes Susan Ichinose, mm -hmm. who does um, alternative dispute, dispute resolution as a mediator and arbitrator. So any of you that have not heard Susan, just um, go to the YouTube and look for Legal Advice in Paradise and type in Susan Ichinose. Um, but she says that mediation as a whole has hit its stride. It's in vogue. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do you see it happening for collaborative law as far as divorce happening? Do you see more and more people wanting to you know, handle the divorces that way as well as attorneys seeing that this is a good way to handle a divorce? I think so. I think as we get um, more cases going and successfully handled, um, I think um, more legal professionals, attorneys, will be drawn to this process. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is interesting. The Uniform Collaborative Law Act that the legislator, legislature had um, uh, drawn up and Governor Abercrombie signed um, a little over two years ago. It was early July of 2012. It encouraged encouraged mm. um, parties to resolve issues, not just divorces, all sorts of civil mm. um, issues, mm -hmm. using a collaborative process, which is similar to mediation. Okay. And again, because it really helps um, 
preserve relationships, if, especially close ones. Mm -hmm, so you've got mm -hmm. family relationships. You might have uh, adult children having disputes about what to do with their aging parents. Mm -hmm. You could have an employee or employee relationship. These really um, key relationships, when they when they tend to um, encounter conflict, we want to support them using um, mental health professionals, financial professionals, really um, act as a team to help them resolve things and preserve those relationships mm -hmm, so they mm -hmm. keep going on, um, you know, indefinitely. So um, I think a number of attorneys in other fields, not just family law, are, you know, wanting to see how this goes because mm -hmm. it would just be wonderful if you know, this could be more of a mainstream way to resolve conflict right, right. and disputes rather than more of an alternative way. Right, right. Um, I myself have, you know, been married three times, divorced three times, and I can't say that uh, my divorces were, you know, really difficult. I mm -hmm. mean, emotionally it was, but it was never where um, the two people hate each other and never talk to each other again. But then on the other hand, I've talked to other couples that split up and it's just like enemies. And yes. so that's the stuff that we want to prevent because especially if you have kids, um, they address it in kids first court and you're yes. part of that too. Um, um, you are the, I read it in your, in your bio, but you, you are involved with kids first. Yes, I um, formerly, a number of years ago, I was a facilitator, a volunteer facilitator, facilitator for Where the you kids go to the court, I and work with when the they when they separate the kids mm -hmm. and the adults stay in the courtroom and mm -hmm. then the kids go upstairs and they don the judge's robe and have the gavel in <laughs> yes, there. So well, I did that. Yes. I know my daughter had to go through that. I, I just oh, I just felt for her. But um, you know maybe on you, Doctor Ewan, maybe kind of tell us a little bit about the child part of children part of it because that's to me the most sensitive part. They're so young and this is molding how they see relationships. Yes. You know, and this is what they're going to bring on to their future, This, their model, you know, so to speak. So how do you come in, and I don't know if you can prevent that from happening, but how do you, you talk to the child, you know, because there's a lot of trust issues broken and mm -hmm. abandonment feelings mm -hmm. and all that stuff? Well, um, I myself is not, am not so much a child specialist, but okay. in speaking at that point, um, basically um, the specialist needs to know kind of the, the stage of the child at their particular age mm -hmm. and what kind of issues are involved at that age and try to address them in relationship to the divorce process mm -hmm. and be able to kind of get a sense of what the needs and concerns of that child might be in, mm -hmm. regard, in regard to the divorce. Because I've seen, you know, there's, uh, all kids handle things differently. Like there's the ones that act out. Mm -hmm. There are the ones that that uh, withdraw, and then, then the, there's the ones that are star star students. You know, they mm -hmm. they, they strive to be, they excel in everything. So, uh, what do you see mostly? And like you said, the kids have different needs. Say the one that is yeah. acting out. How would you sit with that individual child? And well, I think uh, in that particular case, the people that act out have a difficult time getting in touch with their emotions. Right. So you almost have to kind of guess with them about what's going on with them and mm -hmm. kind of uh, let them know that you've got a sense of what's going on inside them and see if they'll kind of resonate with what you say and kind of uh, play it out. And, um, you know, I think in general, uh, you want to convey to the child that everything is going to be okay mm -hmm. um, and that um, this you know, has happened before to other families, and mm. uh, families get through it. That's kind of like what kids court, uh, kids first does. You know, they yes. show that film about um, how you know you're going to have these normal feelings of being angry or rebelling and all that stuff. But um, why don't we get back to um, what Lisa does? Because uh, the, the more traditional divorce attorney, you sit in front of them. Um, you want to split things up, you want to do child custody, how, how does what you do differ from that? Well, um, it differs in the sense that everybody's coming together at the very beginning of the process, and mm -hmm. they're all pledging that we're really going to work, try our hardest here, use our best efforts to resolve this and avoid court. Avoid so court. Avoid, the, <clears throat> the only thing you would do is after we arrive at full agreement, 
then the attorneys can process the uncontested divorce paperwork. And mm. that's very straightforward. You know, we're all experts in, in processing that all through. So you, everyone comes together with that very positive mindset. We're all going to try our hardest to work towards full agreement. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the success rate in arriving at full agreement is 90% or above. That's, so That's great. Because, again, it's a self-selecting process. People want to do it this way. People mm -hmm. want to have it, um, the process be more pono, especially mm -hmm. because they want to preserve their family relationships. Right. So... Um, that's how it differs is the mindset that we are um, going to be focusing in on arriving at full agreement mm -hmm. sooner than later. Mm -hmm. And so part of that sooner Yeah, because I was going to ask you, how long <laughs> is this process? Because, you know, you have uh, um, a mental health expert involved, and then you're going to talk about a financial mm -hmm. expert. So yes. now you got more parties involved. Um, so I just thought, well, this is going to take a little bit, a little bit longer, but you're saying it'll get done sooner? When you compare it to court, and uh -huh. because the courts are so backlogged, and if parties are disagreeing about issues and they mm -hmm. have to set it for trial, oftentimes the trial date can be more than six months out. Yes, I've heard of, I've heard so. that from other attorneys that the poor court system is just burgeoning. <laughs> yes, so they they are fully they totally are supportive of the collaborative process mm, because okay, good. senior um, judge B Mark Browning has said to the extent couples can arrive at their own agreements and mm -hmm. stay out of court, we are fully supportive of mm -hmm. of those efforts and all okay. of the professionals and the parties who are all involved and engaged in the collaborative process. Mm -hmm. So um, so it tends to be uh, quicker. I've I've had cases where we've arrived at full agreement in less than two months. Wow. Other cases have taken longer because they mm -hmm. have more stuff and they're Two still trying to work. Is, is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Others have taken longer or we're still in the process. But, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, we can resolve these in a matter of months rather than you know, a year or two, you know, mm. you hear the nightmare stories yeah. about some cases mm -hmm. taking three years and because, just costing and, and tons also, of money. And also because uh, somebody's sitting on the fence. Um, yes. I uh, interviewed Bradley Coates, who does, you know, he does mediation too, but mm -hmm. I don't think he does the Pono thing. But uh, the usual way about business is that I asked him, I said, what if one party doesn't want to get divorced? Yes. So he says, well, they're just going to have to get ready and go through it anyway, because, you know, you just give the other party more um, ammunition or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and then it just gets worse and worse the longer you wait. So I'm thinking that poor person who doesn't want the divorce, you know, that's... Yeah, it's it's a struggle, and even with the collaborative divorce, you know, you're mm. still going to have people that have fears, and so they want to hang on, or they're just not not really sure what the future is going to look like. And exactly. so that, that's why the uh, the mental health professionals and the financial professionals are so key because they're really supporting the spouse that's just you know is mm. moving at a slower pace. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. really providing all you know the education. Um, you know, the emotional support, the whatever skills or tools that they might need in order to move forward, they're really providing that support to them. Yeah, so touch on the financial support. We were going to have um, a gal here to cover that, but she's not here, so you're going to talk a little bit more how the financial expert comes in this whole team of collaborative law. Sure. Um, the role of the collaborative pr um, financial professional is that person will typically function as a neutral, mm -hmm. um, meaning that he or she, this, the financial person, will come together, meet with the parties, look at um, their assets, look at their income and expenses, and mm -hmm. really just help them work out the financial aspects mm -hmm. to make the, you know, the division and um, living in two separate households it costs feasible, money. right exactly <laughs> feasible sustainable mm -hmm. um the financial professional will help generate options mm -hmm. they'll also find out just as all the collaborative other collaborative professionals um do is they'll find out what their interests are what their goals are mm. and that financial professional will focus in on their financial goals wow and that's they different they that's make, different yeah. from from uh, your typical divorce because it, the the typical divorce is just the attorney, and then you just go through the motions, um, but you don't have any outside help, you know, like you well, guys I, are. I think a typical divorce is one person trying to get more of the money right, from the other as, person. Right, as much as they can get. <laughs> yeah. In this case, it's more like looking at the needs for the whole family. That's good. And then yeah. working it out so everybody sort of gets a piece of the pie and there's some yeah. harmony involved. In because, the case, right. um... You know, according to Bradley Coates, you know, a lot of the time it's the woman that ends up in really bad finances, mm -hmm, really, mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. 
you know, a lot of them may not have been the main um, income earner. They're right. the ones that are caretaking of the kids. Yes. And so her skills in the marketplace, she doesn't have any because she was taking care of the kids or she just had a job that just didn't um, earn as much. Yes. So now she's left with living on less than a quarter mm -hmm. of what she used to. Sure. And then we're trying to figure out the child support. And in the end, you know, um, Bradley just said, you know, she's in a really bad place. Mm -hmm. So with the financial expert, um, we try to prevent that. Yeah, we try to, to, to make it, yeah. a, you know, more feasible for her to go on living with the finances that she's going to end up with. Right, right. The whole idea is, is that the family is a system. So mm -hmm. if you're doing it adversarially and one's just trying to get as much as they can from the other mm. and it's lopsided you know you don't have a sustainable um, family system relationship mm -hmm. you know at post divorce and mm -hmm. so um, we do really look at the needs and interests of the entire family so I in the scenario where you're talking about if it's um, you know the wife that might have uh, had to give up her career or mm -hmm. you know um, her income uh, earning potential over the years had had lessened. Right, the, earning, can, the earning potential. Right, right. Yeah. What can we do to help remedy that? Um, does that um, lesser uh, earning or maybe not as financially savvy spouse need some financial education mm, so that mm -hmm. person can move forward making dis financial decisions in the smartest way? And you know, um, I'm not sure if this is still a statistic, but one of the biggest reasons for people wanting to divorce is finances. You know, especially if something happened to someone's job and so they're under so much stress. Mm -hmm. And you, when you really look at it, um, if you're under financial stress, wait till you go to a divorce. Yep. Oh my goodness, you think you had a bad <laughs> then, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, taking one household and splitting it up into two households, that's, that's two, two costs two, right? of everything. Two costs of housing. Yeah. And yes, it does. it is financially straining. Um, Statistically, collaborative divorces, when compared to a full-blown litigated divorce, mm. it actually does provide significant cost savings, even if you have um, the mental health professional mm -hmm. and the financial professional. And it's because we're coming together early in the process, we're, we're sharing information in a very transparent manner, and we're helping the couple arrive at their options soon in the process, rather mm. than waiting months and years you know, down the line and all the money's been spent. So um, Let me ask you this. Uh, as far as demographics age, it sounds like the ones who want collaborative, to me, sounds like they're more mature. Um, do you see younger couples wanting to do this? Are they mature enough to understand that they need to come to an agreement or? Um, I have my range and my clients uh, range in age. Um, I'm just trying to think of the youngest. I, I have some that uh, are younger and they don't have kids. They want to do mm -hmm. it, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of fast and pono. Um, but I also have um, clients that are o um, quite a bit older. You know, they've got grown children that yeah. they've been married for many years. I so was wondering about that. I, I'm finding that it's actually um, appealing to a broad range of, of people. Oh, wow. And, and, and under different circumstances. Yeah, I mean, my typical client usually has children. The children are in high school or older. They could be young adults. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the marriage has been um, 20 years or longer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're finding a way to uncouple uh, in a manner mm. that's I, going to preserve their relationship. Uncouple. <laughs> we're a couple. No, we're going to uncouple now. Uncouple, yeah. <laughs> Look, we're laughing about it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I, I, I see that there is a pretty broad appeal, but it's still not real well known yet. Exactly. So, so, so. that's why we're bringing it out. So. Yeah. Um, to the listeners out there, you know, because the statistics are for first marriage, um, this is what Bradley Code said, 45% mm -hmm. uh, divorce for first time married, and it just increases as a second, third married marriage. So why don't you speak to those out there, say it's their first marriage, they're thinking of getting divorced, which, you know, to me is always sad. Yes. But what would your message be to them you know even if they're they're thinking of doing this type of thing why don't you speak to the audience that they're just battling it out that doing you know gonna go do it in a very um what's the word you were saying in an adversarial in a very adversarial way tell them you know what is the benefits if they just come together and seek your help and also yours and the financial expert what are the benefits in the end well, um, I really think that if you can see this as something that needs, you know, a solution mm -hmm. and think of it constructively and 
I, I, you know, divorce is one of the most traumatic experiences yeah. anybody can face, you know, short of like death of a spouse, mm -hmm. um, you know, divorce. It's a again, loss. It is, it is a loss. If they can find a way to transform that and think of it as this is really tough. You know, you're going to go through those stages of grief. You're going to you're going to have a lot of feelings, even if you've fought a lot with your spouse. There's mm -hmm. still going to be times that you miss that person. Right. You know, there, there's just really a lot of confusing feelings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And but let's focus in on the future. Mm -hmm. Let's focus in on that. Uh, you know, if we can get through this process and we improve the communication between the parties, mm -hmm. um, you know, just imagine that that you could be friend, friendly or friends with your former and spouse. And have more peace in your life. And have more peace. And, you know, what you put out as far as your energy, if it's positive or negative, mm -hmm. you're going to track that energy back in the mm -hmm. relationships exactly. um, that you encounter. Yeah, in what the about your future relationships? Exactly. You know, um, Dr. Ewan probably can speak to that, that if you stay in that same mental attitude uh, you think the grass is greener in another relationship you are really wrong <laughs> right because you carry everything with you I think uh, right? the, the outcome of the divorce uh, kind of reflects on your future relationship in certain right respect. because everybody's like the yeah. grass is greener right. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, one image that I find very valuable is uh, the, the vision of the spouse is coming together at the graduation of their child oh. and being able to celebrate that and be right. harmonious. And that to me is one of the benefits of collaborative divorce is knowing that in the, in future, the future your relationship will be like very Like your kids nice. are going to get married. Right. Oh, will yeah. Happen, oh, weddings. Will oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're all going to start crying and now. And your kid, your kid wants their parents there. Oh, and right. if they want them there, they don't want them battling. Right. Yeah. That's it. Right? So, so that is one of the real benefits of collaborative divorce. Okay. Well, that's anything else you want to add, Lisa? Um, yeah, I just, I, um, I'm really, really passionate, and I really, really want to let the public know that this is a definite option. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been through a divorce myself, mm -hmm. um, you know, almost 20 years ago. So it's just, I know it's a hard time. Mm -hmm. You've got choices. There's different process options out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I would just love and be honored to uh, continue to support families going through this, this transition and yeah. focus on the future. Um, uh, do it in a very child-centered manner. Right, And right, again, right. The, the hope that um, former spouses can sit next to each other in a wedding, graduation, mm. and be fully supportive of their children and, quite frankly, of each other. You mm -hmm, know, if, mm -hmm. if they couldn't get along, you would hope that they could meet other people and yeah. um, and and have healthier relationships moving forward. Right, right, um, right. That make more sense for for each one of the spouses. Now, I typically ask um, attorneys in their area of law that when somebody wants to sit with them for the first time, what do they recommend they bring with you? And I know for um, divorces, they want to bring uh, finances and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So you would ask for the same you know, um, financial statements or whatever they have, yes. um, if they have existing wills and mm -hmm. stuff like that and their assets. And it's so funny. I'm thinking about it now. You know, it's almost like having to buy a house. You got to bring all your financials <laughs> with you. And th but this time you're not buying anything. You're separating. It's so crazy. But um, that's what you want them to have with them? Um, yeah, I mean... Uh, a basic picture of what their finances look like okay. um, it gives me a better understanding of what their family circumstances are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I know that sometimes it's a period of, uh, period of time for them to keep right. um, gather all the information mm -hmm. and bring it. So as much as they can, um, possibly to a, to initial mm -hmm. meeting is, is mm -hmm. really helpful. But as they continue, if they say, oh, there's certain things that I haven't brought today, I'll say, well, let's put it on a list, a checklist, so you, you make sure that you bring it back mm -hmm. uh, the next time you come and see me. Okay. And for you, Dr. Yoon, um, would you like them to, like, be, I, I'm, I'm sure, open with you and honest about their feelings, you know, if, uh, how they've been treating each other, and then you kind of, like, counsel sure. them? Is that well, what you do? Well, uh, please understand, as the mental health coach, I would mm -hmm. be working with one of the parties okay. and there would be another mental health coach with the oh, other party. Oh, okay. Yeah. So one for each. S yes, correct. Okay. So my role would be more to help this individual facilitate the process of the divorce with them mm. uh, and to, you know, get to know them well 
and to help them cope with their emotions in the divorce process. And then also you know, help them with communication, how to communicate. That's the thing. I mean, yeah. that's probably what got yeah. them in trouble in the first yeah. place right. is the not knowing how to communicate effectively right. and s on top of like financial stress and whatever is going on. The communication thing, that, you know, that's a hard one between so yeah, Ma can, Mars and Venus. Yeah, they're, 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 they're through all their emotional issues so yeah. they can facilitate the divorce process. That's sort of my role with the client. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that um, in meetings where we have the couple there and the collaborative lawyers, what I do is I um, model um, this, you know, communication in a way that is will diffuse the conflict. Mm. Um, if I hear, you know, jabbing at one mm, another, mm -hmm. we have ground rules that we post at, oh. at the meeting, so you know they they know what their expected behavior is. I mean, we we, can, we have permission to call them out and let them know if the communication is not b respectful because that's right. not productive it's just gonna you know back us back up to maybe um and you know an unproductive outcome so right, right. I, we really try to remo uh, model um, more effective compassionate communication mm. i will sometimes ref uh, reframe things if, if something comes out in a mm -hmm. judgmental or you know a manner that could raise defensiveness to the other party i i will reframe or or re rephrase it in a way that neutralizes it and just focuses more in on the information rather than yeah. kind of the, the you know, to negative the, emotion that's to, to packed into To help them move forward. The, exactly, yeah, because yeah, it really is about trying to improve their communication and, and modeling it as collaborative professionals the best way we can. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you um, are letting people know about this alternative way of separating mm -hmm. um, a marriage, but um, is there a, a website or anything I know I'm gonna have you're gonna give it to me and we're gonna put it in the show notes and everything but sure. is there a, a typical website you want them to get directed to at this time um, well um, my own website since I specialize in um, you know collaborative divorce and mediation uh, I do have a, f a fax of frequently asked uh, questions oh, section so uh -huh. that can give um, more information for people to help them um, you know give them information so they can make decisions um, effectively mm -hmm. so my website it's kind of easy to remember <laughs> it's www.ponodivorce.com oh that's easy yeah so that's good that's good and you Dr. Ewan just a phone number maybe uh, I have a website but okay it's not so geared to collaborative divorce but it's more geared to my private practice okay oh, well let us, let us know what you do I mean we're in your office right now oh, and okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's as I mentioned, more like medical uh, medication management of uh, psychiatric conditions is more mm. what I do. But I'm starting right. this collaborative divorcing as well. Mm -hmm. So um, my website is Greg Ewan, G R E G Y U E N M D dot com. Oh, M D dot com. That's it. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much okay. for, for for sharing yeah. and. Um, you know, I was always looking for a better way to do things, and that's one of the reasons I started this um, this podcast is that people need to know there's a better way. If you're going to go into litigation or look for legal representation, um, you have to do your due diligence in order to have a smooth way. You know, it's not always smooth, but if you can make it better, you know, and this is mm -hmm. a great example of using it in the whole legal system as far as, you know, trying to not be so adversary because it yes. is a difficult thing to go through yeah we appreciate your willingness to uh, uh, for us to introduce this to other people because i think the collaborative divorce process will grow and grow as people get mm. to know more about it and mm -hmm. so you're instrumental in uh, helping that along so we thank well you thank for you that. for having um yeah. for wanting to be on the show of course oh yeah, yeah. it's our pleasure so we're going to say goodbye for now and also um this uh, this show was brought to you by Green Energy Drink, and just so happened, Lisa <laughs> knows the CEO's son, right? Yes, yes. Um, and so this is a small world. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Ellen, and hi, Carla. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so anyway, what we usually do is we uh, shaka out for the video, and everybody shaka out. <laughs> and then for the audio, we say aloha and ahui ho. Aloha, Aloha and ahui ho. ho. All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Legal Advice in Paradise podcast. For more information, visit www.legaladviceinparadise.com.